So you're getting into fish keeping and want to learn about the nitrogen cycle. Keep watching as I explain it in really easy terms and how aquarium plants can play an important role. Hi, I'm a gamer's wife, and when I first got into aquariums, I quickly started hearing about the nitrogen cycle. But the impression I got was it was really complicated to understand, so I just assumed it was something only advanced fish keepers needed to know, and didn't really look into it. I know, I know, dumb, right? But I think that's the problem. People make the nitrogen cycle into this big scary thing when it's really not. So why does everyone want you to know about the nitrogen cycle? Basically, it helps explain new tank syndrome, which is when first time fish keepers go to the pet store, get a tank and their fish on the same day, set everything up according to the instructions on the kit, and then don't understand why their new fish are dying. Okay, we wanna avoid that, so let's learn about the nitrogen cycle. Now my goal here is to explain everything as simply as possible. We're talking really high level. I'm gonna minimize the usage of complex scientific terms. And instead, I'm gonna use cute little icons and emojis. <laughs> However, one thing I do wanna add in is the effect of live aquarium plants, which I think is often missing from most nitrogen cycle explanations. So are you ready? This is really easy, I promise. All right, so the first thing we have is our little fish in the aquarium. And what do you do when you have fish? You feed them. That's right, french fries. <laughs> Just kidding. That was the only emoji I could find that seemed to make sense. Um, if you have live aquarium plants, they might choose to snack on that too. But as the saying goes, food in equals poo out. And in this case, we are calling it by its chemical name, um, ammonia compounds are basically what are produced. And in fact, it doesn't just come from the fish waste. It also comes from any uneaten fish food that's in the aquarium, uh, dead plants or dead leaves that fall off. Any kind of rotting organics will turn into ammonia. So let me clean up that diagram a little bit and make some more room. But again, same diagram that we saw before where the fish eats stuff and produces ammonia. Luckily, we have uh, our beneficial bacteria number one, which will eat the ammonia and convert it into nitrite. And then we have our beneficial bacteria number two that likes to eat the nitrite and turn it into nitrate. But really, I shouldn't be using poo emojis here. Let, let's take that away, because really, they should be death symbols, because <laughs> ammonia, nitrate, and nitrate are actually all toxic to the fish. Um, you notice the icons for ammonia and nitrite are a little bit bigger, and that's because they're really toxic to fish. In fact, uh, if you have a water test kit, which you should, link in the description, you basically want it to read as zero parts per million. No ammonia, no nitrites. Now nitrate is a little less toxic, so generally people like to aim for somewhere between mm, five to 20 ppm parts per million. Uh, maybe on the higher side, if you have live plants, uh, which we'll talk about that in a second, or lower if you have some species that are really sensitive to nitrate. And in fact, it's that nitrate amount that determines how often you do water changes. Anytime it gets above that number, you wanna do a water change and you physically remove that nitrate from your aquarium water. So again, let me clean up that diagram again. And this is the normal nitrogen cycle that you see when people talk about aquariums. However, they're forgetting a very, very important part live plants. Now in the beginning we said that um, any dying plant material can turn into ammonia, which is true, but a lot of people neglect to uh, talk about the effect it has on taking in ammonia. Plants will consume ammonia and then in return they use it as nutrients to build more leaves. And in fact, it's not only ammonia, but it's the nitrogen compounds as well. Nitrite is a little bit up in the air whether it works or not, but nitrate definitely it'll, it'll upkeep that. And this information is from Diana Wallstad, who is a microbiologist, wrote a very famous book on plant intakes. In fact, according to Diana Wallstad, live aquarium plants can intake these toxic compounds even more effectively than beneficial bacteria.
That's why there's people like Lucas from LR Brett's Aquatics, who has, oh, 200 to 300 fish tanks at this point, and he hardly runs any filtration because it's mostly lots and lots of live aquarium plants in each of the aquariums soaking up those ammonia and nitrite and nitrate compounds from the water. Another example I can think of is Ocean's Aquarium, which is a fish store that, again, relies heavily on live aquarium plants to keep that water clean. And in fact, the store owner, Justin, doesn't even do water changes. Maybe the occasional top off if there's evaporation, but no filtration other than the aquarium plants. Crazy! Now, if you think you're ready to dive deeper into the nitrogen cycle, you'll want to check out Primetime Aquatics video over here. Jason is a college professor in microbiology, so he'll give you the more advanced scientific explanation you're looking for. And also as an FYI, I won't have a video next week because I'll be at Aquashella. So take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.